so comfortable with you know, our direct supervisor or our subordinate or our creative partner. We close our door, we go in the room, we don't mind showing ourselves in our underwear and all of our pimples and all that kind of stuff to that one person. And we're scared to death to do that with someone in a completely different function, discipline, et cetera. You know, we hate, all hate rejection, but you know what? You'll get so smart so fast. The thing that I've also found about digital people, they're not like ad people. Digital people are much more welcoming, much more open, much more sharing, you know, and, and you're going to learn from them way more quickly than you learn from advertising people. And don't be afraid to go one step beyond whatever it is that you do. If you're on Facebook, get on Twitter. If you're on Twitter listening, get on Twitter and talk. If you read blogs, write a blog. If you have putted around cutting and pasting HTML, you know, learn how to modify your CSS. I mean, just take, go from wherever you are and go like the next step. It's not like you have to master it to be good at it, but you will, you will get more familiar with how to think strategically and creatively with all those things the more you play in it. I think that the whole Spice thing happened when Ian Tate came to widen. I assure you that traditional creative ad people, no matter how freaking brilliant they are at writing those scripts, we're going to think up the idea of, oh, let's get Jason Keith on Twitter because he's got 35,000 followers. And if we do a thing on him, he'll tell all his followers. And then let's strategize it that way. That's not going to happen with a traditional creative person. So go do all those kind of things. You're going to make mistakes. Don't be afraid of mistakes. This is online, so you can go read these things. But man, oh man, do we make mistakes. We staff the wrong way. We reward the wrong way. We, we, we build the wrong way. We, we still make some of these mistakes. You look at staffing plans and you go, holy shit, you know? What happens if they want some digital work? There's no digital people in the staffing plan. Um, you know, it's, it's really amazing. And you can, you can also follow the money. Follow the money. Go back and look at your staffing plans that you put together for clients and businesses. Even if you're not a person who does staffing plans, you'll be surprised at your agency's staffing plans. If most of them, you'll go, wow, this is perpetuating our old model and our old way of doing things and our old way of getting to solutions, right? All the shit's connected to everything else. And then so finally, don't expect that you're going to figure this out. Um, you're going to iterate your way there, just like Google is doing with its plus one button. You're going to have your five you know, criteria. You're going to have ultimate measurement. But you're going to do it a little bit you know, at a time. So finally, get started today, all right? If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. We have a hashtag, BDW Boulder. Use it. F connect with all the people using that hashtag. Follow them, get followed back, start dialogues and conversation with them. We have a blog. How many people blog? OK, those who don't blog, here's your chance to blog. This is the easiest thing in the world. It's preposterous. And the way in which you write a blog post for preposterous is you write an email. You can drag in a link or a photograph or not. And you just mail it to post at makingdigitalwork.preposterous.com. And guess what? You will be published online. Jenna, is, is everyone here's email signed up for that? OK, so you're already contributors to this blog. So blog, write about this session. Write about whether this presentation just sucked or whether it was any good. Write about your expectations. Write about people you met. Write about how great it is to be out of the office. Write about anything you want. But, but just do it, right? Because someone else will retweet it. And then it'll get talked about on Twitter. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, you'll be in the middle of what all this shit is happening. Uh, and that's what's awesomely cool. And it's now my pleasure to introduce one of my mentors, um, who actually brought me to Boulder Digital Works for the very first time, who I have worked really, really hard to get to come to work for Mullen, and I failed at that. Uh, it is Matt Howell, a new uh, managing partner and I believe chief digital officer for Arnold. He has uh, amazing pedigree, was the guy behind Nike Plus along with Scott Prindle way back when, still the definitive case study that everyone's been talking about for 10 years. The guy's been gone from RGA all that time, and still nobody can beat what he came up with. So I give you Matt Howell. <coughs> you got a computer up here? Yeah.
Hey, uh, Nick. Am I on? Yeah, it sounds like. All right. Can everyone hear me? Excellent. Great. Great. Uh, my name's uh, Matt Howell. I'll talk a little bit about my background in a, in, in a moment. But um, uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, is, uh, is more, is there feedback happening here? Okay, not bad. It's just in my head. Great. Uh, I, I'm going to, uh, I mean, Edward kind of talked very sweepingly just about uh, a number of different subjects. I mean, uh, about the work, uh, just about organizations, just like how we all need to change. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more kind of directed, like kind of looking at the organizations that we work within, you know, be they kind of client side organizations or, uh, or advertising agencies, just uh, like given all the changes in the environment and just consumer behavior, just like what we need to start thinking about just in order to, uh, uh, to adapt, uh, to become more relevant, to create uh, different work. Uh, and for context, uh, just at the end of last year, two like kind of big articles came out, uh, just that uh, most of you have probably read all of them. Uh, or both of them, I should say. Uh, one of them was this mayhem on Madison Avenue, which kind of talked about just uh, 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 this, this huge wave of disruption that's hitting the industry, just uh, 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 you know, traditional means of uh, sending out messages or reaching customers are beginning to break down and becoming less effective. Uh, and it's uh, uh, you know, creating chaos within the marketing landscape. And then the second one was uh, this Don Draper's Revenge, uh, where uh, uh, like the, uh, the point of view was, hey, it, 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 it is a dramatic shift that's what's happening, but it isn't necessarily so dramatic that it should reshape agencies. You look at BBDO, I think last year they won the Digital Agency of the Year. Uh, people like David Lubar are saying like, hey, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's about like kind of making some adjustments, uh, just like uh, introducing some new uh, appliances to the kitchen rather than just like kind of, uh, you know, rehabbing the whole house. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I mean, there, there are two like kind of markedly different uh, like views on just interpreting what's happening, uh, just like within the uh, the landscape today. Just out of curiosity, just uh, for all of the people here representing all these different organizations, how many of you are like kind of in the midst of uh, like some sort of major restructuring within your organization right now? Interesting. And how about within the last year? Yeah. Okay. A, a smaller number than I would have thought. Uh, just, uh, uh, but. Um, 
uh, across the industry, it seems that, uh, uh, that everyone's kind of tinkering with process and structure uh, just as a means of responding to this, uh, to this change. And I think uh, just, uh, uh, I've worked at a couple different places and I'll kind of talk about that in a moment. Uh, but I, I think what's, uh, what's necessary for organizations and for individuals is to take a point of view on what's happening. Uh, and my point of view on what's happening is, is that, uh, you know, kind of whether we like it or not, uh, the advertising and marketing business is getting into the software business. Uh, and just like that represents a pretty dramatic shift away from like the way that, uh, uh, that business has been conducted for the last 50 years. Uh, and uh, it's going to affect the organizations, it's going to affect team structure, uh, and it's going to affect process. Uh, it's not to say that like kind of traditional advertising or marketing is going to go away. I mean, just like, uh, like television's doing fine, like print's going to continue on. But just like as we consider the future, just like as individuals and organizations, uh, just uh, it, it's, it's difficult to dispute the, uh, the idea that, uh, that growth is going to be delivered through technology and through uh, interactive media. And just if it's about organizations trying to like kind of create more relevant work, or if it's about us as individuals trying to maintain like kind of marketability within an ever-changing category, I mean, just like uh, this is something I think we all need to like kind of consider and have a point of view on. Uh, I'm in my 40s, you know, just uh, I'm like not a young person, just like by industry standards. I'm supposed to know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't wake up and like kind of uh, like have a moment of anxiety just like where I consider my own relevance, my own ability to stay on top of all the things that are happening. And just, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's something that we all kind of like share as we consider our careers is like how can we like kind of uh, like maintain relevant and marketable like within this changing industry. So my background, uh, I, I worked at RGA for a while. I'm kind of a digital guy, like going back into the, uh, the mid-90s, have been like kind of working more on tech. But for, for the, uh, the, the past few years, I've been working within agencies uh, and uh, have been uh, spending a lot of time thinking about this, uh, this idea of transition. Uh, just uh, as the landscape shifts, like, uh, like how do agencies and client organizations that have been traditionally focused on like kind of broadcast thinking and delivery uh, just begin to diversify, include more uh, like kind of credible, more high-end, like kind of interacting, uh, interactive thinking and work uh, just into that traditional culture. Uh, and for the past three years, I've been working at a smaller agency in Boston uh, called, uh, called Modernista, uh, just uh, uh, like where uh, uh, like, uh, like the, the, the company just uh, like went through a difficult couple of years. But we tried a lot of uh, very interesting, very courageous things that can be attributed to just uh, uh, like some very forward thinking, like kind of decisions on the part of management where we were able to like kind of uh, like really shift things around and evaluate the results. And I'll share some of that today. Uh, just and more recently, I've just moved to a, a, a much larger, like kind of global organization, uh, Arnold in Boston, which has you know over a thousand people, and now it's beginning to think about like kind of that same change, like within a much broader scale. And just like uh, each environment has its own like kind of benefits and drawbacks, you know, a place like Modern East it was like kind of uh, less sentimental, like kind of uh, like more nimble, uh, uh, like you know more open to change. A, a place like Arnold has like a much deeper like kind of scale, and there's more resources. Uh, but like the idea of, uh, of, of how you begin to address this change is, uh, is still the same. Uh, and you know, the challenge is, is like, you know, for the industry, it's uh, like, you know, how do we take uh, just uh, uh, like teams, uh, like structures and processes that have guided uh, like our industry for the past 50 years and suddenly like kind of ask them to create something that's markedly different and do so in a way that doesn't uh, like completely destroy the things that have made these agencies, uh, 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 you know, like kind of profitable uh, and, uh, uh, you know, brands that we all admire. Uh, because it's not this like kind of nihilistic uh, uh, desire to like kind of uh, replace advertising culture with like kind of software culture. It's creating a new culture that's a combination just of the best parts of advertising and just like the best parts of software. Uh, but I, I think that uh, like as we do this, I mean, th there's no proven model on how this is done. There's no like single book that you can like kind of read that say, that says this is exactly how you do it. And like kind of a lot of us are kind of, uh, you know, flailing around in this uh, area, you know, very nobly, but uh, uh, trying to uh, experiment with ways uh, with, with how we can get this done. Uh, so like this presentation looks again more at process and structure, but like you don't really start with structure, just like you start with like kind of an idea about the work that you intend to make. And like from that, uh, from that work, it informs the people that you need to make that work, and then you start to consider structure. But if you start with structure, then just like you begin to dictate outcomes, like kind of uh, like before you even decide